I started my post in January um, in the central team for NHS improvement, and it's a completely different job to the one that I signed up for, but hey-ho, it's a really good one to be leading on, I think, with Ruth May. So I'm very proud to be in this position. But I think there's an important message here. This is not about NHS improvement doing the work. It's about you working with us to share your good practice, your best practice, and so we can learn from each other. As um, Elizabeth has already said, there isn't a magic bullet we can just give to you. But it is about NHS improvement working with you to improve, not as, an impro you know, not as the, the regulator. This is about working together to get better outcomes for our patients, and that's what we all want. So that, I'm sure we all agree on that. And it, for me, it's important, this is not about infection prevention and control teams. This is about everybody who works in the NHS. Everybody has a part to play to make sure we get everything right for the patient as they have their journey through our care, wherever that care is. We've got a massive task on when we think what we've got to do by 2021 to reduce those healthcare-associated infections by 50%. But I believe we can do it. We would, have, you know, those of us have been around for a while. We sat there with people being negative about MRSA and C diff, saying, "Oh my God, how are we going to do that?" But we can do it if we work together, and the strength will be us working together, not working in silos. We learnt a lot from MRSA and C diff. Some of that is transferable, but for me, the biggest element that's different is this we do need to work across the health economy and I don't even know if that's the right term but we need to be working together not working just saying this is an acute problem it's a community problem it's your patient it's my patient they're our patients we could be the patient I have to say I'm going to be a patient next week and I'm second on the list for the top risk of infection so that could be us tomorrow so we need to get it right but I know from my job working in NHS improvement in the south we haven't got consistent approaches. And if we look at current um, PIRs, the RCAs around C. diff and MRSA, we're still not always getting it right. And there's always something to learn. And I think it's that learning that's the key message that has to come out. We do need to learn and share what we, we know works. Ruth, who is the um, executive nurse for NHS Improvement, was um, given the title of the National Infection Prevention Lead from the Secretary of State in a summit that was held in November. And since then, we've been working with our colleagues in Public Health England, NHS England, and a wide range of other people to work with you, the, the people who are working in the, in the hospitals, in the community, to see what you want from us, not us telling you what we think you need to do. We can suggest things, and we clearly need to know where we need to target. And the message that's come through loud and clear is that you want to be involved. You don't want to be done to and somebody to say to you, you must do this, you must do that. But we need to share what we are doing well and not reinvent the wheel, which I think all of us would probably agree with in any case. Um, as I said, it's a massive task and we do have to start with what we know. So we will be starting focusing on the management and treatment prevention of urinary tract infections. Some of it's easier if we're working with our acute providers, community providers. We know we've got established systems that we can work with. But we will have to then begin rolling out, stepping up to get to the next steps. Um, with NHS Improvement and all our colleagues around the table and, and people who work in the provider sectors, in the community, in acute providers, we're looking at developing an uh, improvement resource. Everybody didn't want a toolkit. I don't know if you agree with that. They didn't like the term toolkit. They would like a resource that they can go to to find information. So, for example, the high impact interventions have been reviewed by the Infection Prevention Society. So you would click on this resource and you could be guided to where it's going to be and find things easily rather than hunting around 52 websites we could link things through to make your life easier but we're developing it with you and not doing it to you and that's a really important message that I will um, keep going on about we talk about onset most cases are in the community but due to the I would say probably poor data that we currently have. We don't always know, have they been in our hospital the week before or the month before, if we haven't been putting that additional data into the data capture system. So we do need to start reviewing our cases. And I'd probably ask all of you, have you, do you review your E. coli bacteremias? Could you put your hands up if you do. Not many hands. I can't see brilliantly because I take my glasses off. Um, so I think there's a start of a 10 for some organisations. If you haven't sat around the table with your um, colleagues in the community, with the CCG and all the other providers to review your last 30 cases, I suggest you start doing that now. That will help you to focus. 
We know we need to look at catheters, the management of catheters. There will be some new high impact interventions that will be ready for March. And there's a big piece of work around the use of bladder scanners to prevent the use of catheters in the first place. We say somebody's in retention, but if we haven't scanned them, how do we even know if they were in retention? And we do need to say, as Susan said, what are those unknowns? We can't just tick unknown on a box. But the message is it's not just infection prevention and control team, so please don't feel it's all coming down on your shoulders. We need to be working together to do this. And the important thing is whatever we do, we'll reduce infection, so we will be reducing the use of antibiotics. And that's very clear, isn't it, from what Susan had said earlier. <clears throat> but for me, there's so many different places, and I'm, we could probably be, make this chart even bigger, whether we're working with urologists, whether we're working with continence teams, whether we're working with the community nurses, the practice nurses, the care home sector. It's a massive, massive piece of work that's a really big challenge for us all. But we do need to join up on this and work together. Um, I did, we just looked at some thoughts, really, that we obviously need to review all our cases. And I know from the trust I visit that E. coli are not all being reviewed by acute providers, let alone CCGs. So if you're not doing it, you need to get doing that pretty soon, I would say. And you can look at your own Thebes and trends, and I'm sure they will come out with the same pictures as that Susan alluded to. And we do know that there's some basic messages in there about, if, you know, if we're managing sepsis correctly, are we hydrating our patients? All of this patient safety stuff links together. IPC shouldn't be standing alone. It does need to look around the quality care we provide to our patients. Same things apply really across our community providers. I'm not going to read them all out because we won't have time. Everyone else has spoken about the correct treatment and management of UTI. And I'm sure when I've sat with um, some of our providers, we've been looking at the RCAs around C. diff, we've seen patients who've been on repeated courses of trimethoprim when the, actually, the urine specimen has been resistant for that trimethoprim for months, and yet we've carried on. So sometimes we don't actually look for the evidence that's staring us in the face. And there will be a group of patients, people, patients, they're not patients, are they, who've never been in our care. So we do need to look at these E. coli bacteria, Mr. Germain, who has had no health care. But we, without starting to look, we can't define that group of people. But my plea is that we need to draw you in. You need to help us do this. We will be working together. And we do need to work across the sector, whether it's looking at how we manage our catheters. We've looked at different um, communities where a, a catheter passport is, you know, started whether the patient is in the, their own home, the community setting, or in the hospital. So some basic good information about why have I got this catheter? Why did it even go in? Was it just because I was in retention and I should have gone back to the hospital for a trial without the catheter and I haven't been called back? Or, you know, why is it needing to be there? Big bit about shared learning. If you've done the work, please tell us what you've done in your areas. And um, Elizabeth's slide showed that if it's your the CCG that's done a piece of work around this, please tell us, please tell us so we can work with you to share that across the, the setting. And we do all need to be joined up. So we are working centrally, but we want to involve everybody who's working out there. We would like your examples of best practice, and we would like you to collaborate with us. So, I would like you to contact me if you've got some of the answers because we can coordinate that together and work to improve this important element of our patients' care to prevent those infections as it really is um, a priority. But I don't want you to think we have forgotten GPs, forgotten the care homes, forgotten the other sectors. It's because we're having to start with what we know and what we can begin with, but that will begin to roll out and we will begin to look differently at how we approach the infections across the sector.